Welcome to the show. My name is Jordan Burkott. This is the Crepes Tea House. This is called Big Talk with Little Joe. I have three very special guests. On my right, we have Alan, the wrestler, and he's a uh, teacher. We have Dan, the artist, plays guitar, and we have Roman, the businessman. So, all right. Who, who wants to go first? All right. You want to go first? Is that on? All right. So we'll start. We'll, we'll go this way. So Roman, tell us about your business. Um, okay. I own a company called What's Up and Where dot com. Um, we are online uh, search engine focusing on small local businesses, and uh, we started in Western Mass this past summer, and uh, so far we're in every state except Maine in New England. So we've you know we've grown decent amount, and hope to be growing furthermore so you basically guys aren't local now you're more you're more regional uh well our main um sort of area coverage area is still western mass because this is where we've been since the beginning but um we definitely have you know sort of the borders have expanded yeah, yeah. um across uh you know a little bit wider region than uh, we started, but the way our search works is it's localized mm -hmm. to everybody. So if somebody's searching for something in West Springfield, um, it would show them West Springfield results right. only. Um, and then if they want to expand it, they can kind of go from there out. Now so. I, I checked your website out, and now it shows something about like zip codes, and you can just type in your zip code, and then what categories does your website uh, show, like the listings and stuff? Like well, there's right now we're a category. There's nine categories, um, you know, ranging from restaurants to uh, professional services, health and beauty, basically any business that deals with the public. Right. There's a category for it, but we're revamping that, and it's going to be a uh, keyword search. So you would just type in what product or service you want. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, example I use is shoes, and it will give you every store that sells shoes from closest to farthest. Right. So unlike you know on some of the bigger names like Google, if you type shoes, it gives you a lot of uh, random information mm -hmm. about that topic. We will only show you places that sell that goods or services or provide those services. So um, that's going to be our main searches. It's going to be you tell us where you are so we know where the location is for. Right. And then you type in what type of service or product you're looking for. And uh, we'll display the businesses that provide it from closest to farthest. Right. So it's a little bit more organized. And, you know, the topics could be pizza, beer, you know, shoes, HVAC company, dentists, literally anything. Yeah. I actually saw a thing on uh, TV about Google. Companies were getting this. Uh, they were a little irritated with Google because Google was doing something with their search engine where they were changing a little bit and they were, like, losing business. Do you know anything about that? Well, Google, I mean, the way you advertise on Google is you, you bid a uh, how much you're willing to pay for a click. So, you know, I could say I'm willing to pay a dollar a click. Yeah. He'll say a dollar twenty-five, and he's going to be above me. Right. If you come in at dollar seventy-five, you'll be above both of us, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So it started out as a great tool for local businesses to get on there, but it's turning out to be more corporate because the bidding war is driving price up. Right. And you know, places like Crepes Tea House, uh, you know, if you want to be uh, uh, buy an ad for a restaurant, um, it, the bidding right now is right, right around seven to eight dollars a click. Wow. So it's it's above what a local guy can afford. So. Um, it started out as a great as a great concept, but naturally, like everything else, once the bigger companies got hold of it, um, it sort of drove the prices beyond what local guys can afford. Right. Yeah. You were saying that your your website, what it does is actually, if there's some what businesses there, you were talking about certain businesses where if you use that, if you search on Google for that business, it actually pops up your website. As well yeah. As One of the things that we provide our uh, businesses is, um, you know, we make sure that our Profile link is at the top, so if you search for like Cutting Edge Salon in Feeding Hills, for example, yeah. um, the first link on Google will be a What's Up and Where link to her profile on our search site. And that profile is like a micro website. It has all of her information, her pricing. Um, she puts coupons on there. Um, she can put videos. So it's much more than the name, address, phone number right. that you typically get in like a Yellow Pages. So for a business owner, it's great because before, all she could hope for is that name, address, phone number, which, you know, marketing-wise doesn't have a lot of value. Yeah. Till now, she has that uh, micro page that comes up at the top, and it's being viewed quite a bit by just people searching. Our, our biggest sort of uh, 
traffic incoming is from Google searches. Yeah, yeah. You know, people searching for businesses. There, they, you know, you get the links, and then they people usually click towards the top ones. Uh -huh. You know, you click on what's up and where, and that, you know that drives discovery of our site, and at the same time gives uh, uh, legitimate information about those businesses. So, like Crepes Tea House, if you search for them on. Um, you know, Yellow Pages or, or Google, you know, before us, you get their address and phone number. Um, and I know I, I have a lot of meetings here with, with people, and when I tell them about it, most people don't know about them yet. Right. So I, you know, I send them to what's up and where, and then they can see all the photos, the menus. Um, it, you know, it's just marketing value is much greater for somebody to choose to go to some place when they can see all the info about them yeah. versus just a ad address and a phone number. Now, how do you get into like what made you want to like build that kind of search engine? Because do you well, work, do you work a lot with computers? Ironically, no. My background is in uh, business management, so my, you know, the way I got into it really is just my own frustration with being unable to find um, complete information about local businesses. Right. Um, you know, I've had experience with. Um, where corporations, you know, I, I saw firsthand how it can be um, a little deadly for the local business community uh, because I used to uh, work at an insurance company and I saw an example of that in, in, in person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, in my belief, the path to recovery for the United States as a country is that support of local economy because the, the, the bad thing about bigger businesses is they're, you know, the bottom line counts more and, uh, you know, they, they outsource a lot of jobs and things like that to, you know, other areas. So right. um, I would rather buy, um, you know, my tile from a guy at the X in Springfield than from Home Depot. Because yeah. frankly, as I discovered, you can a lot of times get similar pricing and always better service. Yeah. yeah. So. You're, you're also talking about... Um, in Palmer, what happened is that you were talking about like a, a instance that I believe it was Lowe's, and there was a whole bunch of uh, local people in Palmer who had a lot of locally owned businesses. And once a, once a big business like Lowe's came in, it was there, actually Walmart. It was oh Walmart. I'm so sorry. Super Walmart. Yeah. It was Super Walmart. Walmart came in, and they basically took all the business from the little guys, and then actually drove them out of business, and unfortunately brought them to work at Walmart. You know, yeah. being the greeters and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of those business owners ended up. You know, working at Walmart because um, the Walmart's actually in Ware, which is right out, outside of Palmer. And we had a big, uh, my insurance company would cater to uh, self employed people, mm -hmm. you know, trades kind of guys. And uh, we had a big book of business in that area. And then I, I went to service it in 2002 and found that almost two thirds of them were gone. Right. And when, you know, started asking uh, what happened, like it's like mass starvation of businesses, a lot of uh, people basically pointed that when Super Walmart moved in, um, they just couldn't compete. Right. You know, it, wh why buy a pot from somebody that made it with their hands for three bucks when you can go buy it for ninety nine cents? Yeah. And you know, we're all guilty of it, and me myself included. But what it happens is when you see something like that firsthand, um, you know that area is hit pretty hard. And I, you know, I'd go into areas where it used to be all local businesses, shops, guys making stuff by hand, whatever. And it's all boarded up. Yeah. So that's you know area that breeds crime. It it just doesn't help anybody. And um, so sometimes short term game like a savings at Walmart isn't necessarily the best for the overall um, area that that it's in. Yeah. So it's a it's one of those things. Is it good or bad? I don't really you know I don't know. It could be argued both ways, but. Um, in my experience, it seems like the the cons outweigh the pros. Yeah, I, same with me. Because personally, I don't go shopping at Walmart not because the prices are so cheap, but because when I see ten lines that are open and we got three people at them, uh, I'm, I get a little frustrated because there, there could be people actually working at these lines, and you have like these lines backed up. So I'd rather go to the local person because the service is usually better because someone's always there willing to help. But then you're waiting a half hour to buy, you know, a thing of cereal or something like that. So that just yeah. drives me nuts. My feeling is most people uh, do want to shop local. It's just a little bit inconvenient. It's a little bit hard to find. I mean, even me, I've lived in this area for 15 years, and um, there's a lot of places that I've discovered through What's Up and Where that I didn't know existed. Right. Yeah. You know, various people selling various goods and services um, that I didn't know were there. And, um, you know, we're trying to build a platform where it'll give those guys a little bit more of a, a competitive advantage. Right. You know, yeah. kind of swing the pendulum back in that way.
Now, have you seen, have, has, uh, has a lot of businesses been coming up to you guys and asking, like, to... to host their site the well we we started in the summer and uh you know we started with no businesses right. uh using our services we're a little over 300 right now so you know we've grown much better than we had hoped in the beginning yeah um and uh you know there's some uh financing and things that's been in the works that uh hopefully uh, we'll get and you know if that happens we'll be able to um, grow the concept uh beyond new england so uh, hopefully, it'd be a household name someday. Yeah, hopefully. What's up and where? That's uh, it's what's up and where dot com. Uh, check it out. It has a whole bunch of local listings for local companies and stuff. So if you guys want to get your hair done, or you want to go to a restaurant or anything like that, you can check that website site out. You can type in your zip code, and then you can find out where your the local closest business are to to you, whoever is out there watching on the Blue Channel. Yep. All right, we'll pass it to Dan. My next guest is a guitarist, and we've actually been friends for a long time, since kindergarten, That's right? That's true, we've, yeah. We've been friends for a long time. And uh, how long have you actually been playing? You've been playing guitar, like, for quite a while now, huh? Oh, uh, I'd say about eight years. Right? Yeah, eight years. Eight years. Now, when we were younger, when we were playing on the dirt mounds and stuff like that, those, those were the days. Those, those were the, the days. days. And uh, what decided, because I knew you always used to draw, and then what, you went from drawing, you, you do drawing now, and then you do well, guitar. Uh, I don't know, it's all kind of pretty much hand in hand. Uh, I get to draw graphics for the album cover, and um, I don't know, anything that I can really do that's artsy creative. Right, right. Whether it be playing music or drawing graphics and logos for whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He's a band guy. He's a band guy. Band what, guy. What's your, what's your band? Uh, they're called the Baron West. The Baron West. And you guys were actually playing at Maximum Capacity, which is a local bar. March 12th. You're, oh, you guys are playing March 12th? Yeah. Yeah, because you guys just had, like... Yeah, we now, just had a show that got rescheduled. Right, now, have you played there before? No, I've never played there. You, I thought you played there before. No. No, I almost did. I came close and it got rescheduled. Oh, no, I'm talking about the one before that. Oh, we played uh, We played a show at Finnegan's Tavern. Oh, okay, Finnegan's. We're in East Springfield, yeah. All right. Now, what kind of music do you guys play? Because I know, like... Uh, oh, we, we play covers. You, you play covers? Acoustic like cover that? rock band, yeah. Okay. Play what the people want to hear. Yeah. So Can't what kind, go wrong. What kind of bands now? You play like the oldies, like the Beatles, yeah. Led Zeppelin? Pretty much anything you'd hear on the radio, like uh, any catchy song that people want to hear. So like, I don't know, a lot of Doors, a lot of uh, some Talking Heads. Uh, I don't know, you name it, a popular song, we probably play it. I've never heard of the Talking What's the Talking Never heard of the Talking Heads. Have you, guys heard of, have you guys heard of the Talking Heads? Oh, come on. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Isn't that what we are right now? Yeah, we are basically the Talking Heads right now. Um... Do a pixie song. Where is my mind? Oh, where is my everyone mind? loves that right. song. They're they're called. I thought that's the band, the t Pixies. Yeah, we do one of their songs. Oh, well, who are the Talking Heads? The Talking Heads, uh, David Byrne, man. You <laughs> know David Byrne is? <laughs> well, the guys, come on, you guys should all check sure them out. You should all check them out. If somebody maybe on the Blue Channel will find out who that is. Absolutely. So, actually, lucky for us in the audience, we actually have. He brought his guitar, little Hendrix, over here. This so is true. He's gonna play us. He's gonna play us some riffs. Should I bust it out? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bust it out. He wants a little. Yeah. So it was eight years ago when he was with you. High school. Yeah. Oh wild. yeah. You. You playing? Yeah. All right. So what? What are you gonna? I'm gonna play a Beatles song. Yeah. Gonna play a Beatles song. What's what's the song called for the Blue Channel in case they had no idea who the Beatles? I'm are. only sleeping. Alright, alright. Don't be sleeping though. Please please watch the show. Mm -hmm. 